Welcome to Grace for today. It's Friday, it's the end of the week. We hope you've had a great week so far. And this morning we're going to be talking about how the cross has made a difference. If you've been enjoying these episodes and would like to find out more, then please go to our YouTube channel there if you subscribe to us and you can press the bell icon and then you'll receive notifications or go to the Facebook page and like it. And then we can just keep you updated of any content that we're producing. And again, share it out. We want to get this message out to as many people as possible that God loves them, that he's for them and that he wants to know them in a deep and intimate way and just encourage them every day. So this morning we're going to be looking at a verse, and it's one of my favorite verses actually. It's in 2 Corinthians 5, and it's verse 21. And it says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now when we've been looking at Psalm 91, it's really important that we look at it in the correct way. Because under the old covenant, it's true that God's protection was conditional. So when we people would have read that in the past, before Jesus came and died, then they would have thought that, yes, I will be protected, God will care for me, but it will be based on whether I obey what he says. It's all to do with my work, my obedience. But we know under the new covenant of grace, that's no longer what it's about. Our protection isn't achieved, but our protection is received from Jesus because of what he's done for us. And for me, that's just incredible news. And basically, that was why we ever started Exchange in the first place, when we had that revelation of the love of God. That's why we called the church Exchange, because it was just such a revelation for us, understanding what had taken place at the cross, that Jesus came and he died in our place. And we exchanged our life for his, and all of the privileges that he laid down were then given to us. Just such an incredible work that he did for us that now, today, we can live knowing that we're protected because he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Isn't that incredible? Because I remember before I had that revelation, I used to read in Psalm 84, and this this verse, Psalm 84 verse 11, that talked about no good thing will he withhold from those whose walk is blameless or whose walk is righteous. And I used to think, oh Lord, you know, well, if my walk's not righteous, if I'm not blameless, then there are good things that I won't receive. There are good things that I won't be able to come to you about and, and ask you for because there's sin in my life. There's, there's a barrier, there's a, there's a blockage. I'm, I'm hindering your goodness and your work in my life. So it was such an incredible revelation for me when I understood that that's not the way that we receive from the Lord. It's all about his goodness, not our goodness, all about his grace. And I don't think we can hear that message enough You know, because there's so many times when our hearts condemn us, when our conscience condemns us, when the world condemns us, when we hear these messages, when even under school systems or the workplace, it's all performance oriented. And it's all about you do good and then you'll receive good things. But that is not the way the Lord deals with us. And I love in Psalm 5 verse 12, it says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favour you will surround him as a shield. Isn't that incredible? Because we all want to look out for ourselves, but we know that we can't have our own backs. We can't, in the natural, we can't protect ourselves continually. We can't see everything that's up ahead. We can't surround ourselves with a shield. But supernaturally, the Lord has already done that. He's already protecting us. He's surrounding us with his shield because it's his goodness and it's his faith that we um, trust in. And again, in Psalm 91 verse 14, it says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him and I will protect him. And again, these were verses when I used to think, well, do I love you, Lord? Do I love you enough? How much do I need to love you in order to be rescued and be protected? You know, what counts as enough love? But then again, on this journey of grace, I've understood that we love because he first loved us. Jesus is the source of love. It says in the Bible, God is love. So we don't even have any love to give outside of the love that he's already given us. And the more that we meditate on that incredible love that he has for us, the more that we read verses like John 3.16, but really allow them to go deep into our heart. And when we read, for God so greatly loved and dearly prized the word world that he even gave up his only forgotten son, so that whoever believes and trusts him, clings to, relies on him, shall not perish, will come to destruction or be lost, but will have eternal, everlasting life. That's the heart of the Father for you today, 
That's the extent of Jesus' love for you today. And as we meditate on that, as we think about that, as we allow our minds to be completely captured by the depth and the breadth and the length and the height of that love for us, then we're going to understand, you know, that that love's working in our hearts and our love towards the Lord will naturally flow as we just meditate and receive all of the Lord's love for us. So be assured today that no matter what you're facing, you are protected, not because of who you are, not be, well, not because of what you've done, but because of who God says you are, because you're a son and you're a daughter and you're precious in his sight and because of Jesus' work for us at the cross. So I want us to celebrate that today. Let's take communion and let's remember what Jesus did because Jesus, your body was broken that we could be whole today. So we receive this, we receive all of your goodness, all of your blessings, your favor over our lives, your protection because of what you've done, not because of anything in ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. And we take the cup that represents your blood, Lord, that was shed for us. You died the most cruel and awful death for us that we could receive from you today and that we could be protected, we could be safe, and we could be whole. So thank you, Jesus. So I speak that life over your families today. I speak that strength over you, your body, over anyone that is struggling with sickness today. We speak life, health, healing, wholeness over them today. And we thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and your love. And so that's the end of it for today. We um, pray that you'll have a great weekend. Join us again on Sunday morning. Um, Our services are at 11 and 7 on Facebook and YouTube. And have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.